Hey guys, Level Cap here. Today we're going to take a look at Lawbreakers, the new arena style shooter from Boss Key. This will be the studio's first game, but it does have a pretty veteran team of developers, including Cliff Blazinski, known most for Unreal, Unreal Tournament, and the Gears of War series. Which is why it's even more exciting to see what this game is going to be all about. This is his dream, this is his idea, this is a new shooter, a new IP with his new company where he's not necessarily going to have the same restrictions he might have had at a company like Epic. So it certainly piqued my interest and it's got some cool outside of the box thinking here. As you can see, this class that I'm playing is very unconventional. And in fact, there's not necessarily a lot of shooter mechanics in this assassin class here. She's got sort of this electric whip that she can use to dart around the map very quickly, sort of using momentum and gravity to her advantage. Gravity is a big uh, theme in this game. You're supposed to be able to manipulate it and sort of use it to your advantage every class seems to have some sort of way of messing around and getting around uh, mobility wise and in different and unique ways some of them aren't that interesting um, for without question the assassin is the most interesting class out there with the other classes kind of being a little bit more traditional shooter style classes you've got um, big tanks with rocket launchers you've got um, guys with sort of assault rifle style weapons you've got uh, a chick that's got a minigun and a uh, jetpack to fly fly around with so I mean it's not necessarily classes that you would expect to see in like a battlefield game but in terms of just like weaponry and gadgetry um, they're not necessarily as unique as the assassin class is here um, and she's really fun she's sort of like a ninja spider-man with a blade which is pretty cool now for a game that's in pre-alpha I have to say it felt fairly polished I mean balance wise I'm sure there's a lot for them to do with this game and sort of tweak stuff and hopefully add more classes to the game as there's only four at the moment I really think that this game could use a lot more classes, but um, the, the game crashed once on me during the stream. Um, I got it back up and running relatively quickly, so it wasn't really an issue, and that was over um, I guess the total play time now for me is about three hours. So having one crash in that period of time for pre-alpha certainly isn't bad, and the rest of the game runs pretty well. The game is, of course, running on the very robust Unreal Engine, so it shouldn't be a surprise that it feels so smooth and solid. The uh, character animations, the textures, the map design all looks very good. I mean, I imagine that they focused on these characters in this map just to get something good and playable. The rest of the game could be in a fairly unfinished state at this point, but it does make a lot of sense to sort of focus on these elements here so that they can get some actual player feedback and figure out what the, the community likes or dislikes about the game and sort of develop the rest of the game around that same mindset. Now let's talk about some of the other classes in the game. I'm hoping that there's going to be more than just four. Uh, I think this game definitely needs more classes and more variety to the game. Uh, as you can see in the lower left hand corner, we have three abilities. Our Q ability, which is our ultimate. This guy gets sort of um, rocket launchers that charge up this is the enforcer here his primary is an assault rifle weapon um, and then his shift ability down in the lower left hand corner again is sort of this like speed boost ability allows him to run around real quickly jump fast um, I think he can kind of do like better jumps or like double jumps or something and it allows him to maneuver around in low grav spaces as well the center of this map has sort of a low grav area that changes the rules of combat there um, and then his E ability is an EMP grenade which actually disables the shift ability of other characters if you hit them with it and it creates sort of an EMP cloud for a little while so people can actually run through it and still get affected by it. You don't have to hit them directly with it. He's kind of a straightforward class, definitely one to pick if you're um, new to the game or like not really totally on board with all the anti-gravity concepts yet. You need a little, a little time to familiarize yourself. You can kind of just wrap your head around his fairly standard weapons. An interesting little concept here is when you go into the low gravity areas, you can actually hold control which will shoot your weapon behind you uh, to basically give you a momentum boost forward. And you can do this with all the classes in the game. Um, to sort of affect your momentum. Some of them are more effective than others. Um, the Titan class that has a rocket launcher uh, will actually boost him through the low grav areas very quickly and he's a big kind of lumbering class so it's kind of cool to see uh, what he can do in low grav areas of the game. This action is called blind firing when you put your rifle or your rocket launcher over your shoulder and shoot it backwards. Now because this game is in pre-alpha there isn't necessarily a lot of tutorial information available out there. I was given like a little tutorial video video to watch to kind of explain the basic abilities of the classes, but some of them are not 
super intuitive, like the rocket launcher on this class. It took me a little while to figure out how it worked. And even now, I'm not like 100% on board with it. It's, it's kind of weird. You can like activate it, but then it will fire on its own after a little while. So there's a few abilities that I would say are a little bit more clunky. Um, they don't uh, they don't operate as fluidly or as, as smoothly as you would expect. Maybe I'm just spoiled from, I don't know, playing a lot of Overwatch and everything's just very straightforward and easy to learn, but also has uh, a good amount of depth to it. And this game seems to have the depth to it, but is just not quite as easy to learn. The primary weapon for this guy seems to have uh, enough ammo in one magazine to maybe down one guy uh, and then switch to a sidearm if you need to finish off a second guy. Um, there seems to be a big emphasis on that like weapon swapping um which is okay i'm not a huge fan of it weapon swapping to me is sort of a skill mechanic just seems maybe boring at this point or more of a nuisance um i would prefer weapons just to have a little bit more ammunition capacity and stuff like that rather than be like all right i killed one guy with my assault rifle now to try and kill the second guy with my not as good sidearm and i found a lot of situations in this game where i was able to easily kill one guy but then the second guy behind him was more difficult because i got stuck in the middle of a reload or i tried to hold him off with a grenade and it just sort of puts you at a in a situation where you always feel like you're hugely disadvantaged with the second opponent that you're facing even if you are more skilled you're less likely to win that fight now here we've got the titan class and he's probably my least favorite class not necessarily a bad class but just the play style of it. it's a bit too slow for me um, he's very sluggish compared to other characters he can move faster in anti-gravity uh, areas by shooting his weapon behind him which is a cool functionality uh, but his primary is a rocket launcher that's got four shots the missiles shoot like comically slow low um, which makes them like really important to get closer to his enemies to be able to lead and they also sort of blow up after a certain distance so you can't just like um, spam fire people at long range with it because your rockets just won't reach their target um, and then he's got a sidearm that's sort of this lightning gun that uh, is very close range oriented so both his weapons are a little bit more favorable of close range combat he's got the most health in the game the slowest movement so he is without a question the the tank class Class. And then his ultimate ability allows him to go uh, Palpatine basically and shoot lightning out of his hands and waste people. Um, and there's all these sort of this meta game to everybody's ability, and I don't really understand it yet. Tremel, one of the developers on the game, called me up on the phone. I know him from Planet Side and was trying to like explain some of the abilities while I was streaming to me, and I, I didn't quite get all of it. But there's definitely a lot of meta and sort of minute things to this game that aren't uh, necessarily intuitive or clear right at the start. So uh, a good tutorial system, I feel, is going to be very important so that people understand all the, the benefits and bonuses of each of their abilities that they might not understand at the start. And then this class here is the Vanguard. She's probably one of the easiest classes to use. She has good damage output. She's got a chain gun that can wreck people in like medium range. Her, her jetpack allows her to maneuver in low gravity and normal areas very efficiently and quickly. Um, just a good class to start playing the game with if you want and frankly a good class to continue playing the game with because she's very powerful and has good damage output she has these sort of cluster grenades that do a lot of damage now really i've only put like three hours ish total into the game so far so analyzing the meta and the balance is just it's too soon for that i can tell you what i like and what i don't like um and try and summarize that quickly but uh, i will say i want to play more of this game and try and understand it a bit better what i do like is the assassin class she's very unique she sort of challenges uh, my concept of movement around the map and she rewards you heavily for um, understanding her, her movement ability and mastering her movement ability. The other three classes are just far less interesting to me. I don't really like them. They don't feel that fun to play. I don't know what it is. Just none of their weapons feel that fun to use, that engaging. I'm kind of annoyed by the limited ammo capacity on some of them. The rocket launcher shoots really slow. It just doesn't feel that good to fire the weapons of the other classes, so I don't really like them that much. Um, so I was hoping there'd either be more classes so you can mess around with other classes, or they just spend a bit more time balancing out the classes, or making them feel a little bit more unique. The game mode itself felt kind of uninspired, unfortunately. It's sort of like a, a weird take on Capture the Flag 
flag. It's it's like a mixture of King of the Hill and Capture the Flag. You capture a battery that spawns in the middle of the map. If you take it to your base, it sort of charges up, uh, and the enemy team has to try and take it back from you. If you're if the battery reaches 100% charge while it's in your base, then you get a point. But the weird thing is that the battery charge is a set value. So if the enemy team captures the battery from you while it's at a 99% charge and then takes it to their base and it completes in their base, then they get a point. So it seems weird, like you could have the battery for 99% of the game but still lose if the enemy team captures it for a random point in the game. I'm not I'm not really that on board with it. It doesn't seem that well thought out. It seems a little contrived. Um, and I just think they could do better, especially with kind of the cool map design and the cool uh, assassin character around this. I, I just enjoy a better game mode. And one other small thing that I'm not crazy about is the heal stations in the map. Uh, you don't regen your health naturally in the game or through any other mechanics. You have to go to health stations that are placed around the map and it takes a little while to heal up and you just sort of sit there in the heal station and it's boring. I mean the trailer of the game makes it look like it's this crazy over-the-top fast-paced insanity and then you're sitting in a health station for like a bit of time. And it just sort of is this weird break between the action that is honestly not really that welcome. I would just like to keep fighting and keep playing the objective. But then it's like, oh, well, I probably shouldn't go in there with 50 health. I should go and heal up at the heal station. Then you backtrack and you just kind of wait there. And then, yeah, I don't know. I, I it, it seems weird. It seems out of place. It seems like it doesn't really belong in this game. I feel like auto regening health or having classes that can heal you or health packs placed around the map in more strategic interesting locations would just be better than these sort of always functioning health stations that you have to like go out of your way to access. Now the teams are made up of five players each but it's not necessarily that dependent on team cohesion. I mean skill's a big part of the game and that's cool that's what arena shooters are about but if you're looking for a game that's heavily saturated in teamwork and coordination and stuff this probably isn't going to be that game. I mean, sure, it helps to move in with your your teammates and try and capture the objective together, but you don't have to, and it's not necessarily something that I felt like, man, had we only had our team working together or using the right classes and all that stuff, it, it doesn't seem to matter too much on what class you pick or how well you're working together with your teammates. Other than that, though, I would like to play the game more and try and improve my skill as it does seem to have a pretty high skill ceiling in it. Um, and I think ultimately that really is sort of what the, the main attraction factor of this game is, is that the more you play it and the more you understand the meta of your abilities and movement the better you will become and the cooler crap you can pull off in the game anyway i'm looking forward to seeing how this game evolves from alpha through beta to final release uh, without question i think they have to have more characters if they're going to do anything to this game to have it be competitive with what's on the market right now but i think they definitely have the building blocks of something that could be a bit more fun i think they also need to focus a little bit more on speed and maybe less on these close quarter conf find areas because uh, the most fun I have in the game is sort of when you're outdoors in these fast moving environments or anti-grav zones um, and the the corridors and the rooms and stuff like that seem to be a little bit less interesting because it's just sort of choke pointy and uh, not as dependent on skill as much as like explosive spam or just kind of chaotic combat. Anyway that kind of wraps it up for my initial impressions of the Overwatch pre-alpha. I hope to be doing uh, more videos on this in the future. As always guys thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. This is Level Cap signing off.